Welcome to Oddball History, dipshits. <laughs> checkity, 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 checkity. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Something, something, this is something. A rapping, what you gonna do? This is a rapping podcast. <laughs> we're making a dramatic shift in content, and we're gonna freestyle rap for the next 35 minutes. So we're, buckle up. We're here to say things now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been we're, a lot of quiet so we're far. We're rapping in a major way. <laughs> So we have the second podcast, Sans Lawrence. Yeah, Lawrence couldn't be here tonight. He died again. Yep. So at sea once more. He just can't quit the sea. He's <laughs> like those guys in that song, uh, what's it called? Brandy or a fine girl by Looking Glass. Fantastic song. But they're married to the sea. Oh, that's okay. my point. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why Lawrence couldn't be here because he was so he's married in love to with the, the sea. sea. That yeah. He died in it. No. <laughs> no, he's good. Once again. Uh, <laughs> Lawrence is alive and Lawrence well. Is good. He just couldn't be here. Uh, and we have uh, for our top, what's our topic this week? The top, we got a hot one. Hot one off the presses for <laughs> this week's Oddball History. We're doing the Army Beef Scandal. That's right. Of 1898. The hottest news story of 1906, arguably. Almost hotter than the beef they were serving. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. Uh, or at least the conditions now, it was stored in. <laughs> as, as room temperature as the beef <laughs> they were serving. Uh, yeah, uh, this is going to be a gross one, guys. So buckle in. If you don't like uh, talking about rancid meat, uh, you know. Yeah. The maybe, beef scandal is very rancid meat heavy. It's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's some gross stuff. I mean... Uh, meat in the late 1800s <laughs> seemed to be a real uh, dicey game, real a dicey, dicey game. proposition. Yeah, real coin toss of what Eating you were getting. Any meat, uh, but yeah, beef uh, especially. Yeah, this beef. So the army was uh, it was the Spanish American War in 1898. It That's was right. uh, one of the other times we've gone to war with Cuba. We've done it a few times. Yeah, we intervened in the uh, in the. Uh, in the Cuban fight for liberation mm -hmm. after the sinking of the Maine, which I don't remember. Haven't they found out that it like exploded on its own? It wasn't so actually I literally, sunk? You read about it, and it's just Operation Northwoods. Again, What's that? Operation Northwoods was during like the Cold War with the Cuban Missile Crisis, and they actually they like they released them all as like FOIA or something, where they actually had plans they didn't end up doing. Of having like a commercial airliner and then like setting up terrorist attacks on nice. civilian and military targets to frame the Cubans so we could go to war with them. All right, which yeah. is just a redo of this. We yeah, the main. Yeah, they're it, yeah. It worked. It worked to it, whip up. Oh yeah, people were angry. People were real mad. They were ready to go to war with Spain. Remember uh, the main to hell with Spain. Oh, is that the bumper that was sticker? That the bumper sticker. That's yeah. a cool bumper sticker. That is, yeah. Not remember, enough bumpers in the time. But. Remember, I was too young, but I my I had a high school history teacher who used to, uh, one time was like, hey, do y are y'all old enough to remember when everyone was driving around with those uh, bumper stickers that said, hey, Iran, and had uh, Mickey Mouse flipping the bird? <laughs> I was like, no, I, <laughs> no. Uh, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> Why was Mickey Mouse so anti-Iran? It was during the uh, the hostage situation, uh, okay. I think. Yep. Uh, also, probably when Homer Simpson got his T-shirt Ayatollah Asahola <laughs> that uh, Marge then tried to sell uh, yep. at the swap meet, even though it works for any Ayatollah. It, it's really an evergreen. <laughs> it, it's, perfect, it's good. Yeah. Perfect joke. Yeah. So the main gets sunk. Yep. People are fucking fired up. People are real upset. Oh, I want to go to war with Spain so bad. Yep. Uh, even if we have to wear heavy wool uniforms <laughs> in Cuba and Puerto Rico. Uh, so they did. Yeah. So yeah, we were kind of famous war. for logistics being great. And not here. This was a not, different army. It was army. a different time. This different was not army. the streamlined uh, a bunch of armies of one. In the yep. I think I read that there were 28,000 people in the army at the time, which that's yeah. a very low number. Uh, and then uh, they were... Yeah, they were not well organized to go to war <laughs> yeah. in any facet, but uh, the food was a big one. Uh, there was a bit of a departure from the past in that in the past in when the U.S. would go to war overseas and they yeah. needed beef, they would kill uh, fresh cows wherever they were. They would eat local Which beef. Which has been a thing just forever. The like killing of local beef? When Rome would go to war, they just eat stuff at the place. 
Yeah, all right. It seems simple. Doesn't it seem like a simple concept? Trust the universe. Food will be there. <laughs> yeah, come on, guys. Let's be cool about this. I love like that. Like you bring you know? them and then you kill them there or you kill stuff there and steal stuff. You know, you don't eat old stuff. Refrigeration's wonder, an issue. I wonder if they were ever like pillaging uh, the food of a place that they just, you know, sacked and, uh, and they were like, there's fucking nothing good here. <laughs> yeah, you know? This is a bunch of bullshit. Like, this whole town fucking doesn't have shit to eat. What terrible grain and ego. <laughs> like, like, you know, your friend whose family would never have good snacks. Yeah, the worst. Yeah, imagine a whole town of that. And you're a Roman soldier. <laughs> you're tired You've from all the raping and pillaging. You've been killing the shit out of people yep. all day. That works up an appetite, it does. I'm sure. Yeah. And then you go to the cupboard, and it's a bunch <laughs> of fucking healthy fruit snacks. Not the Not the shark-shaped kind that we all love. <laughs> fucking, no. Fucking the healthy kind yeah, that they sell at Whole Foods. like Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Horse Just shit. the worst kind. Horse shit. So... <laughs> So they so they depart from this tradition with the Spanish American War. Uh, they which it wasn't uh, pretty. It you know it was like the Spanish American War was where like Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders did stuff. Yeah, it's when we they, claimed Guantanamo Bay and just kind of kept it forever. Yeah, it's where it it sorted out a whole lot of stuff. I must have been uh, doodling in my notes that day in history <laughs> yeah. class because I didn't remember any of this. Yeah. But it was very it was a very like huge thing in the shaping of the world as we know it yeah we uh yeah the u.s got uh puerto rico the philippines and guam i think yep. out of it uh it was uh and it was the end of the spanish empire mm -hmm. uh so uh a big deal but for now they just they uh they had a problem and that was that these soldiers needed beef <laughs> where's right. the beef where the soldiers are saying, where's the beef? And then uh, this one fella, uh, what was his name? Uh, you know who was I'm talking about. Was it the general? About. It was the brigadier general. Yeah, Aunt Miles um, Nelson not, or something. Not Miles. It was uh, General Charles P. Egan. Yep. General Charles P. Egan was the one who was kind of in charge. And he, uh, I think, wait, no, there was a different guy. Who might have been in anyway? One of these, <laughs> one of these dickholes. Google it on your own. This is like uh, you need. This no, is this uh, is a listening guide, not the full history. No, the uh, I know the Secretary of uh, of War might have uh, done it. In any case, they decided that they wanted to support the meat packing industry of Chicago, yes. Illinois. It was a huge industry at the time, and they're going to show. They're uh, they're gonna buy American and typically for everything government it's like lowest bid contracts yes and they're and like yeah so, we could buy cows in Puerto Rico yeah but Big Tony in Chicago says he can do it half price yeah so and we so jump they, at it. <laughs> yeah so they uh, contract it to three huge meat packing uh, places in Chicago one of them Armor Armor it's still around it today still you can get hot their dogs. hot dogs. Yep. Which you might. Uh, they probably have less people in them now than they did back then. I, yeah, probably. Probably. You would, that <laughs> would, would like that's hope. actually their catchphrase now. <laughs> less people than Sorry there about used the to be. <laughs> Fewer uh, vat fallers. But we'll get back to that. Yes. Uh, anyway, Charles P. Egan or that other guy. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one of the two. Them. Probably Chucky e. P. They fucking uh, they uh, made this contract, and it was for all uh, refrigerated and canned beef. These uh, and both refrigeration on trains and canning were new technologies, and they hadn't yep. really got them down yet. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, in addition, like the canning and the refrigeration was bad. Uh, but that's in addition to the beef also being like Bad. disgusting. And what and they did to counteract it is they literally like put embalming fluid. Yes, and they injected acid. it with formaldehyde, <laughs> which, which was apparently a thing people did at the yeah. time. Which I mean, there's still you could say like the preservative names of chemicals today, and they'd sound scary because they're just like chemical names you don't know. Yeah, but these are ones that we know now. Probably not the best idea. Yeah, and uh, so they're they're shipping these uh, the the canned beef. I believe was they said it was the le it was like the pulp leavings from when they were making beef extract. They would take Ooh. that pulp, <laughs> which was of course Already extracted of all nutrition, and can it up uh, poorly, <laughs> apparently, Poor and send it soldiers. off. So uh, sometimes the soldiers would open up, and it would already be putrid, and even if it wasn't, it was pretty fucking horrible. Well, and anyway, they also talked about it as part of like the logistic problem they had, is everything stopped in Puerto Rico before going, 
And they talk about they had like pallets and pallets and pallets of this canned beef just like sitting on Baking a dock in the sun. for weeks. That's uh, what gives it flavor. <laughs> yeah. It's already pre-cooked yeah, in was, the can. They were uh, it, was, it was stewing in its juices yep, for, for, uh, flavor. for maximum for, flavor. To be savory. Yep. This beef. <laughs> but I thought, I thought it was crazy of uh, like the amount of people it killed. Oh, yeah. It's because they were talking like... Two- and it's like impossible to know, too, because conditions were so shitty that everyone yeah. was dying of all sorts of disease, yeah. one of which okay, it was like uh, malaria, yellow fever, and dysentery. And then, uh, and then all these uh, horrible uh, beef-related uh, <laughs> yeah. maladies. So way more people died but, from the beef than in combat. Yes. And, like uh, a drastically fever, large number. Yeah, and yellow fever uh, has the same uh, symptoms as uh if you had eaten a bunch of rancid beef and gotten food poisoning yeah. it's all the same like if uh, the, all the symptoms are the exact same down to the bl- all right went full retard and lost the batteries in the zoom again so here That's we right. are and we're gonna seamlessly transition back into the show yeah so uh the the beef was killing a lot of <laughs> We don't know exactly where it cut off, but a lot of people died because of this beef. A lot of people uh, uh, combined the beef along with yellow fever and mm-hmm. malaria killed twice as many soldiers as uh, as the Spanish did. Yeah, really which is ran it up on the Spanish. Pretty good, pretty good numbers on the board for beef. You know, yeah, uh, not bad at all. Uh, so they, <laughs> so. Uh, I think you said you were talking about how this tied into the jungle at the time. The Upton Sinclair book. Well, that that uh, yeah, it does. That comes a little later. Uh, uh, we talked about the canned beef. I wanted yep. to go back to the refrigerated beef because that was a different thing altogether. That was gross. Okay. because I didn't understand that there's a difference between the canned and the refrigerated. The refrigerated was uh, that was the one that they uh, injected with a bunch of formaldehyde. There we and go. The guy who eventually would be the whistleblower to start the U.S. Army beef scandal. Yeah. Uh, he said that uh, the the beef smelled like a Dead an human. embalmed corpse yep and that tasted like a decomposed boric acid yes which, which does is not specific sound it doesn't sound nice pleasant how much decomposed boric acid is this guy eating? <laughs> yeah that's my question he's a pro this guy knows what he's talking about is that yeah that's uh i think any is the wrong amount sure yeah to just know what that is yeah that's a you've had a hard life if you can just call <laughs> yeah. out I think this, this is smells the, like an embalmed corpse and oh, tastes man. like decomposed boric acid. Yeah, because like, that was literally from the formaldehyde they were using. Is it literally was flesh being stopped from decomposing with formaldehyde? Yeah, so, so it, it was, literally smelled like it. Yeah, so it's supposed to be uh, being preserved by refrigeration, the wonder of the age. Yeah, but it is uh, more often being preserved by formaldehyde. <laughs> yeah. and the guys do not like that flavor profile. No, they do not. They're Which not again, into why it. did they think they could pull this off of having adequate refrigeration along the entire transport in Puerto Rico on another ship in Cuba? It's uh yeah, it's crazy. It's just it, would, it couldn't have happened. To what degree did they think this was possible? You know, <laughs> yeah. or were they just like, oh, oh shit, man, this beef is gonna be fucking gross. <laughs> man, we do we ha- can we go back on the Chicago thing? Do we yeah. have to support the Chicago <laughs> Beefpackers? Yeah. This is gonna backfire on us pretty terribly. So everyone's getting sick and dying, you know. Yep. But eventually, America wins the war, and uh, that's. Uh, did we get the part with all the stuff that happened because of that? Oh yeah, we got that with like Guantanamo Bay and yeah, all the, all the shit they got. Yeah, uh, and which is kind of it's literally what we've always done is we go fuck something up, install a government. They eventually rebel against that government we installed, and then we create problems for ourselves down the road. Yeah, sometimes just to keep banana prices down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, at least this one kind of had a reason. Yeah, and which I, was just. Fuck the Spanish, which and, isn't a great reason. Yeah. They talk about it like being a cult. Hey, like, man, you're not remembering the main. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think <laughs> everyone wore main. fucking t-shirts back Remember then? the main like, to you, hell with Spain. Yeah. You better fucking remember the main, yeah. man. You don't fucking come around here talking about the main blew up <laughs> on its own. I think they do talk about this as like a uh, a war of like just colonizing. It was just what we were doing. 
Yeah. And it's like, yeah, we're going to do that more. This is the hottest thing at the time. <laughs> hottest it thing. Was just the, Hotter than that beef. The Macarena of its <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <laughs> it was the original TikTok dancing. So they, uh, yeah. So they win the war. And then uh, that's when we finally get the reports uh, that, whoa, these soldiers have been fed a bunch of rancid <laughs> beef. This beef was not great. The, well, they talk about how malnourished everyone was is because the, like, they obviously don't want to eat rancid meat, so a lot of the guys would just kind of starve, and they didn't have really a great backup plan for. Oh yeah, that was one of yeah, that was yeah. one of the things is they had nothing else to eat. There was no backup plan for them. They had to eat the rancid beef. Yes. Oh my Which god. Which I would love to be in that meeting of just like, do we have any backup plan? It's like, no, I don't think you understand the quantity of beef we have coming. <laughs> Yeah. We got so much goddamn beef. It's going to be coming out of our ears. Speaking of beef, Jimmy's neighbor is over here shirtless putting out the sprinkler. He is. Dude, they got a great yard, though. Look <laughs> at my dead-ass grass. That is a fantastic lawn for the summertime in he Texas. Does, he does cruise around I shirtless. I know you can't see it out there on the internet, but just think of a very plush lawn. <laughs> it is. And uh, and a fellow with no shirt on putting yep. out the sprinklers. Taylor's brother was staying here one time for the Texas OU weekend. He goes to OU and see that their cars are par- parked across the street. He yeah. was backing out, might have had a cocktail or two, <laughs> and just fucking aced my neighbor's car. <laughs> and I didn't know about it till the next morning, so I had to go, like, talk to him. I, they had to speak Spanish over there, so I had to, like, kind of navigate it. I'm just like, sorry. <laughs> and he was like, the guy was like, I think he he drinky a little. And I was like, wow. <laughs> Who, who's to know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what does that gesture mean? <laughs> yeah. oh, we can't go back in time and solve this 100%, all right? <laughs> but, yeah, they're nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this has been the neighbor minute. <laughs> We're going to talk about a new one of Jimmy's neighbors. Every, every show. We're going to profile them without their knowledge. Yeah. Maybe get some footage of them. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's gonna, we're going to add it at the end. It'll be fun, I think, for everyone. Yeah, I got a little old lady that lives next door. Who doesn't want to live in Rear Window, the movie Rear Window? <laughs> Who doesn't want to be Jimmy Stewart with a broken leg? Her- Ignoring Grace Kelly the whole movie. <laughs> the whole and you're movie. like, what are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing ignoring Grace Kelly? You fool. You fool. Uh, this old lady named Shirley, sweet lady, go over and help her sometimes. Just There's th- a lot of sweet old ladies in Rear Window. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, I'm, it's At what, least two. That's exactly where I'm living is in the Rear, <laughs> rear Window. But uh, I, I thought her name was Nancy for some reason. <laughs> there was I just a that, yeah. miscommunication. And I, and I called her You're Nancy. Confidently calling her Nancy. To her face just for months. And, and then one time she was just like very sheepishly, I was like helping her like turn a faucet off. And she was just like, Oh, yeah, my name's Shirley. <laughs> it's like, Oh, sorry. <laughs> just the disrespect of just blatantly to someone's face. Just yeah. be like, Thanks, Nance. <laughs> Thinking I'm being like the good neighbor, helping out an old lady. <laughs> just an elaborate ploy to <laughs> belittle her one day at a time. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Not good. Apologies to Shirley. To Shirley, your great neighbor. Um, yeah. So, uh, end of the war. The the beef scandal begins. It's really it's a uh, it's a, had they they have it out between uh, two army uh, uh, officers. Uh, the one is named uh, General Nelson Miles. He's the whistleblower mm-hmm. here. He's the one who's like, hey, guy, you've been serving my guy's fucking yep. embalmed <laughs> beef, and it sucks. We hate the flavor profile. And, uh, <laughs> we don't enjoy the boric acid. <laughs> we do not like that. Yeah. Yeah. We do not like that taste. Uh, we're spice people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Little paprika. They, so he's like, uh, this is bullshit. The, the canned beef was bad. All the beef was bad. And we're not <laughs> yeah. taking it anymore. Yep. And then this fella, after this other thousands of men died. <laughs> Brigadier. Yes. After <laughs> thousands of men died. They couldn't be their own whistleblowers because of all the death. Yeah. They were just face down in a fucking bog somewhere with mosquitoes <laughs> eating them. Covered in shit. Covered what? in their own shit. We said this would be a gross They're one. They're being uh, propelled around now <laughs> by posthumous <laughs> streams of diarrhea, bloody diarrhea. Area, which is a grim sight. Just little, I don't know, like little trolling boats, One just thing, like fishing, <laughs> just dead bodies floating around a bog. <laughs> like, like imagine a, imagine if in the, the movie Rocketeer, if he went really out of control, and also the rocket, it wasn't a rocket pack, it was bloody <laughs> diarrhea shooting him around. So he's running into buildings and stuff. Oh, and also he's dead. 
<laughs> he's dead of yellow fever. So it's just like the movie. Rock it is, is here. Not a good sight, to say <laughs> yeah. the least. This history. Like, uh, it is not. It's grim down there. It's in bad. Puerto Rico in and the shit, Cuba. In the shit box. War is just an ugly war, thing. I war think we can hell. agree. Yeah. <laughs> you see people being propelled around by their diarrhea <laughs> streams and going, war never changes. <laughs> No, but so people are dead. Back on track. Still flopping around on the <laughs> ends of streets. <laughs> you got to move on. So, so, so uh, yeah, so this guy is like, I'm sick of watching my men long flop. after their deaths <laughs> flop around on the end of streams of bloody diarrhea. <laughs> It is not. Uh, it is not uh, a dignified. It's not way dignified to go. at all. Yeah. It's not. Uh, it's not becoming of a soldier. Yeah. You should see these guys. Some of them are twenty <laughs> feet in the air. No, so, anyway, so he's, so he's he's mad about the beef. He's, <laughs> he's, he's mad. He's very mad about the beef. He's, he's upset about the beef and then this guy charles egan is like hey guy you're a fucking liar i didn't see any diarrhea streams when i was down there yeah i'm a brigadier general brigadier general and, uh, and then they, they like the the solution of it is they like did admit to any wrongdoing they were kind of like yes, yeah. never <laughs> no the guy came out so strongly against it that he eventually was discharged because he uh, uh, the guy was his commanding uh, it was a senior officer yeah. and he said of him he lies in his throat wrote he lies in his heart he lies in every hair on his head and every pore in his body i wish to force the lie back in his throat covered with the contents of a camp latrine which i think is a funny defense yep. for a guy accused of forcing people to eat a bunch of gross shit <laughs> yeah it's like accuse me of forcing a bunch of people to eat gross shit you know what that makes me want to do it makes me want to fucking hold you down and force you to eat a bunch <laughs> of gross <laughs> shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you he's really you he's motherfucker. He's creating a pattern. I should I should have you eat a fucking can of rancid beef. <laughs> yeah. Without your knowledge right now, have you flopping around posthumously <laughs> on the end of a stream of bloody diarrhea. But so yeah, that was too much. You you can't say you that, can't that about your senior yeah. uh officer in the army. They do not look Especially kindly on that. 18, they don't like turn of the century. They don't like that flavor profile either. <laughs> I tell you. And they so they uh this guy gets discharged, but really he faces no real uh consequence yeah. because he's just kind of quietly retired like uh, president at the time William McKinley mm -hmm. is like uh yeah, just go home and wait until your retirement age and then we'll give you your all uh, your staff pension and shit yeah and so Still he happens. he does that he died i think a very wealthy man because then he went and like invested in fucking mines and shit you did in like 1900 yeah he's a monopoly guy yeah he was everyone a lot of people were <laughs> back monopoly then. men you were yeah. either dying face down in cuba during the spanish-american war or you were swimming or, in gold coins like you owned a railroad. Duck. there was yeah. no middle zero middle no middle at all the time so uh egan comes out strongly and yeah and they have a thing called i swear to god beef court they had a fucking beef court <laughs> and beef court was That's, not it's like a, a like a cinemax judge judy just beef court <laughs> I, I I would watch it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Get get some beefcakes up there on the bench. <laughs> beef. We don't court. have Lawrence here for the beefcake talk. What it's, a shame. Uh, it's a yeah. shame. It is a shame. A, we miss you, Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, and uh, your love of beefcakes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, beef. And in beef court, uh, the beef is exonerated. <laughs> they find the beef. But really, <laughs> the, the beef thing, is exonerated. It was a very like. It seemed to me to be a very low bar to clear because it seemed like the ruling was more like. Uh, there's no uh, legislation on the books about having to keep food safe in any way. <laughs> so uh, they didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. And also, uh, there's no evidence that this beef that was served to the army is any grosser uh, than any <laughs> beef that any housewife is buying at a grocery yeah. store. It's just Sure, it sat on a dock in Puerto Rico for a month or this two. This is how gross <laughs> beef was at yeah. the time. And in comes uh, Upton Sinclair, mm -hmm. uh, author of the novel novel the jungle yep. a, a a great and disgusting work of literature mm -hmm. 
he had uh, worked. He had gone undercover and worked in a meat packing plant for a little while, and then he had wrote up a bunch of what he saw yep. in this book. And it was a real pain in the ass to get out uh, because uh, people were either disgusted by it or they didn't want their sweet, sweet beef empire to come crumbling <laughs> down. Yeah. You know, so it took Armor's him still around forever to get uh published uh and when he did it was uh he made direct reference to the spanish american war yep. and how the beef had killed more people than the spaniards uh and people were fucking shocked mm -hmm. by the book it was disgusting i mean even today well, they talked about like the the percentage of just like rats being packaged <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah people fell into vats apparently, regularly apparently that was like the hot that was another hot trend of uh the early 1900s was falling it was working oh. too long and falling into vats and the uh, the crazy thing about the vat thing is sometimes they would find them in time to fish out their bones but other times they wouldn't find them at all and then their liquefied corpses would just go out as a uh, beef broth uh, <laughs> yeah. as uh, as as delicious when delicious they, when they beef say broth contains up to five percent additive <laughs> oh, oh dear god oh, oh, oh no uh, yeah uh, all these all these workers falling in uh, it, it's disgusting they uh they talk about there's uh rats everywhere and then to combat the rats they put out a lot of poison bread and then the poison bread kills the rats but the rats go to die someplace in the fucking meat packing plant so they end up going into back the, in the hopper <laughs> yeah. with, with the poison beef and the poison yeah. bread all ground up together like really truly disgusting yeah. not shit. a good long -term so shocking strategy. uh in the uh, the new uh, uh president now now is uh, Teddy Roosevelt, who fought in the Spanish-American War, of the course, which is going to uh, come into play here Not in a minute. Not related but he to DMX. Is, uh, true. A lot of people think that. A yep. lot of people get mistaken. I know I've heard people say that before. Yeah. Oh, did you know DMX is the great grandson of Teddy? Ro but it's not true. It's not they true. Just, they just look a lot alike. That's <laughs> yeah. why people say that, and because yep. of the Rough Riders thing. And but but besides, it's just a coincidence. The Rough know? Riders anthem was totally different back then. <laughs> so we just want to make that perfectly clear. Yeah, way different. Way different. <laughs> way different. They uh they did uh, stop drop and open up shop <laughs> yeah. in Cuba, yeah. but uh, they sprayed diarrhea everywhere, which I don't think the Rough Riders of the no. early 2000s ever <laughs> did, did to their yeah. credit. Uh, they weren't yeah. eating rancid beef. Uh, so That was what they were going to give to you. <laughs> but either way, Teddy Roosevelt, is uh, who is president now because William McKinley has been assassinated. Uh, assassinated yep. i just short my brain shorted out for a second <laughs> that's fine he got assassinated by a fella named leon something he has a weird <laughs> golgosh i think it's pronounced yeah. leon golgosh uh an anarchist and he uh he went up to him and shot him uh, in the belly and he died like eight days later because nothing at this time was not fucking agonizing and gross. <laughs> yeah. Everything was. So Everything. of course he couldn't just yeah. fucking die. He had to die eight days the, later. Of a gut shot. So just, he's just rotting away, yeah. you know? Not good. I guess the only solace we can take is that uh, he wasn't flying around on, <laughs> Down in that on the end of a stream of diarrhea uh, that we know of. He could have been. That's they might have whitewashed history yep. in that way. But Teddy Roosevelt, the new president, he's so shocked by this that he uh, – and he has actually got and he has had some correspondence with the author Upton mm -hmm. Sinclair before. But he's so shocked reading it that he has to independently verify. Like he sends two guys to Chicago and is like, it can't this be – <laughs> It can't be that disgusting. Yeah. And they come back and they're like, oh, it's oh, at least boy. that disgusting. It is uh, at least uh, that disgusting. Have we talked about the vats yet? <laughs> Teddy, you got to hear about the vats. There's so You're many people love vats. This. It's sad, but it's like fucking crazy too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like these people have families, but also like think about like, whoa, those vats. Like that's fucking metal too. You know? <laughs> that should be on death clock. My point is it's sad. Yes. But fucking metal. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck. So they come back with this report about how sad yet metal the, be <laughs> the, beef, the beef is. Industry Awful. is. People should be held account. It, but. And, th and this has gone on like a lot of people are a lot of people have the same reaction as Teddy Roosevelt of shock and and and, uh, and disbelief and mm -hmm. sending people out to confirm for themselves how bad it was. But every one of them came back with that same. <laughs> 
answer Holy shit. about the, uh, yeah, ab- <laughs> yeah, every <laughs> single one uh, about the sad but metal uh, meat packing plants. They were all like, it's true what they say, what Upton Sinclair said. Yep. So uh, that leads Teddy Roosevelt, who also I'm convinced the biggest thing that made Teddy Roosevelt eventually act on uh, the beef scandal and passed the legislation in 1906 was that he was a fucking rough rider. Yeah. You know what I mean? He had actually eaten the eaten embalmed the beef. beef. He had mm-hmm. got the diarrhea. He had <laughs> he been was, he shot. There. He had shot around Havana like a fucking rocketeer, <laughs> uh, a disgusting, smelly rocketeer, rocketeer who people go diving out of the way when they see coming. Because you don't want to be under him. Yeah, you know? never. You never want to. That's uh, people don't talk about that part of history. <laughs> anyway, but, but it so, did lead to a lot of uh, sweeping changes for factory workers. Yeah, it so, was uh, it was big on, and Upton Sinclair was actually upset. He wanted people to be to more have uh, to to more be shocked by the treatment of the workers, and everyone was just like, "Oh, that's gross. That, <laughs> oh, that's we've been my eating beef. That. <laughs> yeah. That's my uh, so, uh, but." They, uh, yeah, he, in 1906, uh, Roosevelt act, pushes Congress to act and they pass, uh, what is it? The meat inspection act, mm-hmm. I think. And the, uh, the like f- all the FDA the federal starts. food and drink act or something like yeah. that. That was like the precursor to the FDA, Started the fad before the FDA. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, I Egan think all those, uh, rides off into the sunset. No one gets punished. <laughs> Uh, Nobody even there admits is to some, wrongdoing. There is some. Uh, there is some change brought about yeah. at the end, which I like. It's pretty happy for a story we cover. Really, that's yeah. and anything was done. Yeah, I mean, all those people still died. Yeah, they were still uh, lifted in the mud and the bl- up into the stratosphere. <laughs> yep. By the, right. <laughs> but they. Uh, yeah. So uh, and then uh, the other guy. Okay, Nelson Miles, the whistleblower. Yeah, I was reading oh, about had him a, a little bit. End. He actually died at the circus with his grandkids. He was a really big fan of the circus, apparently. I love so he old, died having a, a joyful occasion. The horrors that he had seen. And <laughs> yeah. that he like just fucking I just go to the, the circus, circus and relax he, with my family. He, weird memory for those grandkids, I gotta think. Oh, you know the grandkids what I mean? didn't die with him? Uh, no, he died of a heart attack. Oh, it wasn't okay. like a circus. It wasn't like a circus tent fire. Like a, no, like an elephant trampled him. No, he just had a heart attack right in the middle of the circus. Just straight up couldn't believe how many clowns they got <laughs> yeah. in that car. You know, he, his heart. Where are they coming from? They kept coming, and his heart couldn't, he take, couldn't it. take it. He was like, if three or four more clowns come out of that car, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna a fucking die. Gone. <laughs> Uh, but it's the way we'd all want to go, I think. If you, know, you die, do what you love. And watching you know, clowns some... pile out of a car. <laughs> you so, got to also hope for those grandchildren uh, that this heart attack was suffered after those guys who ride uh, motorcycles around that giant cage. metal cage. The death cage. Yep. It's very fucking awesome. Because that would almost be like your grandpa dying twice. You know, your grandpa <laughs> dying and you're not getting to see yeah. the motorcycle guys. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. I shudder to think, you know, <laughs> I shudder to think. a fate worse than bloody posthumous diary. <laughs> but so, uh, yeah, that concludes our, uh, discussion of the, of the army, US beef sc- army scandal, beef scandal really makes you think it really makes you think. <laughs> yeah. So Scott, you got any stuff going on? I, uh, I've had a good, I've done a bunch of stand up this week and then I, uh, I, I caught a, uh, a documentary that everyone was talking about like, Eight 15 months ago. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, was the that Woodstock that 99 doc. I finally watched it. Nice. The three-parter on Netflix. Oh, yeah. That one. It was uh, very good. It was weird to be like transported back to that time. Like if oh, you lived yeah. through it, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember this. Yeah. Lip Biscuit weird. did rock. Fucking uh, Carson Daly is around. All like, young and handsome. I used to see Carson that, like. Yeah, every day. Every day. On TRL. On TRL. I remember when they used to play whole music videos. Ooh, wow. Remember that? And then they yep. started cutting them, and then it was the end of the dream, you know, really, in <laughs> yeah. a lot of ways. And the, that's, the 60s, that's the actual day the music died. Yeah, the 60s died that day, yep. I think, the day TRL uh, stopped showing whole videos. But the, my favorite part of the Woodstock 99 documentary was uh, Fred Durst, all right? He, like, starts a bit of a riot in the crowd during Whoopsie. his set. Uh, during break stuff of all things Which, because yeah. it could only be break stuff. Yeah. This is 1999. Wouldn't, I don't Nookie hadn't come out yet. 
Look, uh, yeah, you uh, if you were around in 1999, you know if break stuff came on, you were just ready to commit felonies. You, you broke know? stuff. You were ready to choke a baby and uh, <laughs> drop kick an old woman. You were ready, it's you're not re- right or wrong. It's just art. You know what I mean? Fred Durst comes on. You're ready to sell <laughs> putrid beef to the United States government. I would straight up. Oh, yeah. I you're, ready, fucking, you're ready to commit I, crime. I would sell them embalmed beef. <laughs> That's how I break. <laughs> That's my break stuff. Yeah. It's fraud. Uh, just just beef fraud the you worst know, that's fraud what there that, is that's what that song puts me in the mind to do so you can only imagine how these kids felt yeah, oh yeah. in 1999 when he's basically like he, he did like a talking uh, uh what do you call that in the middle of a song interlude an interlude thank yeah. you he did like basically a talking interlude where he was like when the music starts up fucking fuck shit up you know which well, I, they, they probably th- did every show they, to be fair yeah. but this time they were already on the verge of fucking shit up. I, I totally uh, I like identified with that moment though, is when like the people like the people in charge, the producers were just like, "Hey, we kind of need everyone to chill out a little bit. It's getting pretty rowdy out there." And then they play their first song, and it like they're like, "Ooh, that's a good crowd though." Yeah, it's like, "Nah, we're gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna do it." Yeah, and I mean. Uh, it had it was definitely encouraging a mob, but it had to feel cool to uh, get on that fucking piece of plywood for Fred Durst. And yeah, s- dude, that's like cool as shit. Uh, it really is. But anyway, the great part of it is when he uh, he gets off stage and Kurt Loder is right there, you know, and he the knows Loder, everything. Rest in peace. Is he dead? Probably. I don't, I don't think he's dead. Oh. Yet. <laughs> he's very old. Shout out to Kurt Loder. Uh, whether you be alive or dead. <laughs> yeah. We hope you're alive. For what it's worth, Kurt Loder, we hope, <laughs> hope you're alive. Oddball history. We hope Kurt Loder is still <laughs> alive. Uh, so Fred Durst gets on stage and Kurt Loder comes up to him and goes, wow, man, this is getting really crazy out there, huh? And Fred Durst is just like, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> the first thing an innocent man yells. <laughs> Just getting out in front of it, you know. You, get, like, you think of like the court hearing of just like now you had the uh, angry crowd of nineteen year olds, and then you had them chant uh, "break stuff." That's right. And then they and then they broke stuff. Was, Do yes. you feel like those actions are tied together at all? No. I what? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I I fail to see your logic. I had never. I, I mean, I, I had never even thought of it. The song's about breaking through to your emotions, all right? It's a metaphor, man. <laughs> I'm talking about, like, smashing up an old car in a parking lot, yeah. you know? Or... <laughs> it seemed like it'd be a fun event to go to, though. Actually, I take it no, all back. I, I'm the not videos big... of the riots seemed, like, fun. Well, but then being there and yeah, not having... Uh, not having shade would and, be bad. Yeah. They took your water. They stood in an empty parking lot. <laughs> Yeah, they're at a decommissioned Air Force base. <laughs> yeah. Horrible place for Woodstock 99. Yeah, terrible. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a good time. You know, they talk about the fir- the original one was shitty like that, too, where it all had like such the crazy it great was, moments yeah, that it were was famous. It was like rainy, and then it, was, yeah. and then it got really hot. And so they didn't everything have enough was really, stuff for everyone that was there. And, and it was like rampant running abuse way and, late. Jimi yeah. Hendrix played on a Monday morning. Like no one was, no one was really left for yeah. Jimi Hendrix's set at all. Everyone who was was like lying there, hung over as fuck, <laughs> watching like a historic Just malnourished with yellow fever. Probably thinking like, God, turn it the fuck down. <laughs> So good. That's a pretty liberal rendition of the Star Spangled Banner, sir. Yeah, I hardly recognize the song. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, it was a fun documentary, though. Yeah, good, good time. We had the a weird interaction. Speaking of bad food, is we were at the fire station, and we leave like the bay doors open sometimes. When you get a big canned beef delivery, <laughs> no, we leave the bay doors open. Never had a problem. Station fifty three down the road has their has had their ambulance stolen twice. Oh shit! <laughs> Which is just weird that it's the different people, totally unrelated, like a month apart from each other. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like drove it to like baton rouge and ditched it oh i heard about that i think and they made the ambulance crew working that day drive out in a city vehicle to get the ambulance and then drive it back oh shit like they that didn't have like, yeah but uh we left the bay doors open and this dude just pops into the kitchen we're all sitting there like eating lunch and he's just like hey what's up guys like i'm just coming up from houston uh 
I got some uh, I got some seafood out front. You don't want to take a look. And so this guy pulls up. He's in like a beat up Ford Ranger. And then uh, my, me and my buddy Alan walk out there, <clears throat> and we're like talking to him. And immediately, very quickly in the car, we don't even ask. We're just like, so what you coming up from Houston for? And he's like, well, to be honest with you, I just got out of prison. <laughs> and he had like these three coolers right. in the back full of fresh Gulf shrimp. I would like to buy seafood for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so uh, the, most of the ice had melted, but it was nice. still in cold water. All right, and that's I'm good. of the believer in fate, where Alan had when his When life presents you. I was like, hey, a guy, an ex-con just drove up in a beat-up Ford Ranger. Full of seafood. Selling us fresh shrimp 700 miles away from an ocean. Not a, on in ice, but water. in cold water. Cold-ish yes. water. Yeah, sure. you believe and you go for it. Say yes, yeah. All say right. yes, yeah. yeah. But the worst part, and he had ice in the other cooler. It, it, was, it was iced down. It was good. But, uh, we see him later, and we don't buy all of it. I think he was looking for a bigger sale because we got five pounds, and he was like, oh, man, 10 of you guys are going to tear through this. <laughs> That's hardly going to be a dent in you We're like, hey, yeah, he's guy. But uh, he gave us a card. It's the Shrimp Mafia. Good name yeah. for a man who's getting his life back on. <laughs> getting getting away life. from the criminal life and into the <laughs> shrimp <laughs> business. Yeah. The sh- yeah, dr- driving seafood up from Houston, selling it on the street. The shrimp felon. <clears throat> But so that's what I would use. We catch him later. We're on a run, and I notice I was in the ambulance, so I see him first, and I'm like, "Ooh, I'm gonna wait for the engine to see this and laugh at it themselves." <laughs> He's on an intersection, like in a not great part of town, just in a parking lot of a CVS, standing on the corner with a raw shrimp in his hand, just waving it, <laughs> waving down cars Hell to finish yeah. selling the rest Get of his shrimp. shrimp. Here. So he's just a street shrimp salesman. I got somewhat cool shrimp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come get you room temp shrimp. <laughs> but uh, no, we ate it and everyone was fine. Nice. Yeah. So this goes to show you should always, when a felon tries to buy, uh, tries to sell you some shrimps, you should buy them all the time. No questions yeah. asked. I believe in second chances. Yeah. And I believe this guy's starting to get his life corrected. Where do we you go that. to get a load of seafood after print? Like, do you have. I think he just got a guy. He's he's in the shrimp mafia, hence the well, name. Well, that, that is very. But true. he came back and uh, he had red snapper next time. Oh shit! We I didn't I was cooking. I didn't purchase the red snapper. A little pricey for a fire station <laughs> fare, but <laughs> I trust the guy. I love the characters in your life. Papa, <laughs> 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 your uh, your best friend, uh, the the meth guy, and the uh, oh and god, then, that guy, and now this shrimp dealer I, I i i don't know if i've told the story on the podcast about jordan if that is his it's it's a fake name <laughs> but uh yeah it's just like this guy that's really addicted to drugs and homeless in the city and he kind of stays around my area i work in and so i run on him a bunch and uh i the last time i interacted with i've interacted with like four times and we always have a ball he's like the <laughs> nicest dude he's insane obviously but, like, we have good interactions, and then I'll take him to the hospital, and the nurses all know him. And they're like, no, this dude freaks <laughs> out and, like, throws chairs at us and stuff. So they always he always gets kicked out and arrested again. Oh, and I just, like, refuse. I'm like, he's such a – he's a nice guy. He's just a nice kid. He's so <laughs> cool with me in the don't know him like I do. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem here. But Why I say, are y'all being so uncool to Jordan? What did you do to make him throw the chair? So the last time I ran on him, he was just like, hey, I, like, killed a dude five days ago. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, well, that's uh, that's not good. And then we're in the back of the ambulance, like, checking him out. And, like, cops walk up because he got into a fight at a bus stop. And uh, he lost. But he was winning most of the time. But then the guy kicked him in the nuts, oh, which damn. is unfair. He wanted me to know that he was winning the majority of the time, though, which I wasn't here to judge him. You Jordan's know? a man of honor. Yeah. There's one thing I know about him. <laughs> it's a man of, man of his word. Well, number one, meth, the love of meth. Number two, honor. Honor, yeah. But, uh he was telling me he like killed this guy five days ago went on a big bender <laughs> and here we are at this bus stop fist fighting it's a long and long trail to get there what an adventure of a- but so the <laughs> cops walk up and i like step out and i'm just like hey i gotta i think i gotta i'm gonna tell these guys you murdered a guy so sorry <laughs> about that and he was like i totally get it dude <laughs> <laughs> oh I was like, sure okay. sure and so this cop walks up to the back of the ambulance and i was just like yeah yeah here he is 
Uh, and the cop's like, hey, so uh, here you killed a guy. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, yeah. Like, when was that? It's like five days ago. And he's like, where was it? And he said, like, this, this, the, cor- the intersection where it was near. And then the, guy, the cop goes, where's the body? And then he looks at him and goes, you know, I can't tell you that part. And the cop <laughs> goes, ah, you're right. And then just closes the door. <laughs> it was like the worst episode of First 48 of all time. So apparently like he's on drugs, so it's, you know, doesn't count as good. As a good confession. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, hey, I, I was really hoping we'd uh, dig in more on this. Yeah. <laughs> like, Get some maybe go to the questions. intersection. I don't know. Sure. I'm not going to tell you how to do your job, but the, I just loved the lack. He was like, oh, where's the body? And he was like, I can't tell you that. And he's like, <laughs> Check, well, fair check enough. and mate. Far be it from me to pry. <laughs> <laughs> I love a cop who believes in not prying. Yeah, it's good. He's a polite man first He's of all. A, yeah. He's a gentleman. Detective second. <laughs> Murder detective second. Let's see if I got anything else I want to talk about. You got anything else? I don't think so. Yeah. I think we're good. I think uh, we should uh, let you watch uh, Below Deck. <laughs> Oh yeah, the historic episode of Below Deck. We are. I mean, holy shit! I can't. We can't say anything about it. I can't. Cause okay. The, he hasn't seen it yet. Because I don't. My my wife Neither loves all Taylor. the Bravo shows. Most of the time, I don't like them, but there's a couple I can get down with. Yeah. You know, and yeah, like Below, Below Deck's Deck. kind of one of them. Below Deck's uh, solid. It lends itself to reality TV. Yeah. Like just the yeah. This premise. The whole premise of yeah. yeah. These kids live in their wild, horny lives on the. <laughs> yeah. Not all right. I shouldn't say that uh, in reference to this particular episode. I've already said too much. You know, I don't. We got to get out of here. Yeah, we got to get out of here. I'm gonna spoil it for yeah. Uh, Jimmy. Um, yeah, I don't well, want to do that. Thank you. I'm Good saying. night. See you next week or two weeks from now. <laughs>